OBS has pretty much always been a mess under Linux, especially Arch. Every single distro packages it differently, enabling and disabling various different components, so whenever the OBS team announces a feature coming to the Linux version, there's no guarantee you'll ever actually see it on your distro, especially Arch. I did a full video about why OBS in the standard repo is a mess, but I'll leave you guys to go check that one out. Previously, the only distro where this wasn't a problem was Ubuntu, and I guess Ubuntu's derivatives as well, because Ubuntu was the only distro that had official support from the OBS team. Now, I no longer need to care, because the OBS team has answered our call, and there is now an official flat pack for everybody else to use. So now, no matter what distro you're on, assume you're using a modern enough distro that supports flat packs, you're going to have the exact same OBS experience as anybody else. No more working with these like ancient half-working plugins like the OBS Studio Browser plugin, which every couple of updates just stopped working. No more dealing with custom versions of OBS like the Titan 652 version. No more dealing with the AUR. Now I can just install OBS and it works like it should. But there are some other niceties that come with it being an official package as well. Now, this is going to be a bit of a mess of recording because I'm using two versions of OBS at the same time, but we'll make do with what we can do. So, the big change that we have is now, rather than having to use our stream key for everything, we can actually link our OBS client with our various streaming services. So, if we go into our settings and then go to stream, the old way this would be handled is you'd go to whatever service you want to use, Restream, YouTube, Twitch, whatever it is, you would then go to the website, you would find your stream key, and dump it in here. The problem with working with stream keys like that is if you leak your stream key, then anybody can connect to your stream and, you know, stream to your account with no verification whatsoever, because the stream key acts as basically a private key. And if someone knows your private key, there's no point doing any verification on that user. And because you had to copy it, now it's in your clipboard, so you could accidentally paste it somewhere, which I may have done at one point, that can be a problem. So to connect your account, all you need to do is find one of the supported services. In my case, I'm going to be using Restream. Click on the Connect Account button, and then it'll open up this window to go and log into your account. I'll do that and then cut back to when it's done. So now if you ever go and reset your stream key or do anything like that, it'll automatically be loaded into your OBS client, and you will not have to deal with it. Now just dealing with stream keys would be useful enough. But if I go and click apply, you'll notice a bunch of extra windows appear. So back, I don't know, like version 25 or something like that, the ability to add browser docs was added. These are basically embedding browser elements into your OBS window. So you could do things like have your chat on your OBS screen, you need to have things like, I don't know, your Twitter feed or whatever you want. But when you go and connect to a service like Restream, it's going to go and automatically populate your docs with a chat, your Restream channels, and also your stream information. And Twitch works in a very similar way. So if we're going to apply it this time, now we have our Twitch chat here, we have our stream information, and there's actually a couple of extra ones as well. These ones don't appear by default, but can be quite useful. Things like my Twitch stats, so this will show things like whether I'm online, how many views I have, if I'm streaming right now, how many live viewers I have, and then the other one we have right here is our Twitch activity feed, so many people follow me, send donations, all of that fun stuff. It should be noted that like every other element in OBS, it doesn't have to be floating. If you want to make it so it's not, drag it to a location where it can stick there. Sometimes things like the chat don't work properly when you first move them like that, but closing and reopening the application is going to fix that. Let's see if it actually does it live. I'm going to be very surprised if it doesn't. Give just a moment, and there we go. You just need to refresh it because... Uh, I don't know, OBS is weird sometimes. One of the nice things with the Twitch chat doc is it supports various Twitch chat add-ons. So one of the popular things to do on Twitch is to use things like Better TTV and Frankface Z. And if you have those set up for your stream, you probably want to see the emotes coming from those services. So having those in your Twitch chat inside of OBS can be incredibly useful. But if you don't use them and you don't want to see them, you can go and disable them or use one or the other, whatever you want to do. It should also be noted that even though OBS has a very, very long list of all its supported services, 
most of these do not have the ability to log into the service and then share the stream key. Only Twitch, YouTube, and Restream have this functionality. Maybe we'll see it in the future with other things like, say, Facebook Live, but don't expect it to be there for everything. This is absolutely a great feature, but there's something I would love to see added. So I use Restream as my main streaming service. Restream is a service that allows you to stream to YouTube and Twitch at the exact same time. And when I logged into Restream, it showed me my Restream information. And that's great if that was all I cared about. But because I'm on YouTube and Twitch at the same time, I want to have things like my Twitch stats, maybe my Twitch stream information, maybe my YouTube stats and things like that. So maybe have the ability to log into sub-services so OBS knows which services you're actually using inside of Restream. It's a small change and I can certainly get around it by just adding in these as custom docs myself, but it would make it a little bit more convenient. Now all of that's great, but let's look at how we migrate from a non-Flatpak version into the Flatpak. It's not that difficult, basically it involves moving a folder around and that's pretty much all you need to do. So normally on Linux, your OBS settings are stored inside of your .config folder inside of a directory called OBS-Studio. All of the things in here are incredibly important, and this is what you need. So the other stuff, the stuff that's stored for the Flatpak version, this is inside a directory called .var. Inside of here in app, and then com.obsproject.com. Dot studio. Then inside of that, inside of config, then inside of OBS-studio. It's not exactly a convenient location, but it's where you need to go. So basically, take everything inside of this folder, stick it in this folder, and you're good to go. Under the assumption that the version of OBS you're using that is not a flat pack is a relatively modern version, like within a couple of versions. If you're using, you know, 27.1 and then the flat pack is 27.2, you'll be fine. But if it's like a big version difference, you might have to go and manually change stuff, but hopefully you're not running something that old. Now, besides just having this new flat pack support, OBS 27.2 has a bunch of other really cool changes as well. One of those being in the way that hotkeys are being handled. Previously, there was no indication whatsoever when you had overlapping hotkeys. Now, this was fine when you had things like, say, I don't know, the same binding to start and stop something. But let's say we have the same binding on another thing. That could be a problem in some cases. Now it gives you a warning sign and be like, yo, you probably shouldn't do that, but if you want to, go ahead and do so. So it's never actually going to stop you having conflicting bindings. If I go and apply that, it's going to be perfectly fine. But it will tell you there is a problem, so if you want to address it, you can easily do so. Anything that has this warning sign next to it, if you click on the warning sign, it'll show you all of the bindings using that key binding. Also, you have the ability to filter by hotkey. So let's go on a hotkey for this one right here to the letter D. So if we go and search for D now, it's going to show us all of the bindings using whatever that key combination is. So it might be D, might be Alt D, doesn't really matter what it is. Now you can actually search for them. This isn't something you would use every single day, but it is certainly nice to have there to clean up your bindings. Or maybe you go and download someone else's config and you want to make it so it lines up with what you want it to do. Now, this is a weird one I don't see myself personally using, but I'm not against its addition. Blending modes. What I mean by this is the same thing you see in an image editor like, say, GIMP, for example. Right now, this layer is set to the normal blending mode. But we can have this be an additive layer. We can have this be a lighten layer. Actually, light and additive look basically the same in this context. We can have this be a darken layer. We can have this be a subtractive layer and things like that. I'm sure people that are way better at streaming than I am have some interesting way that things like this could be used. I don't know what they are, but I like the feature. There has also been some performance improvements with Capture under X11 and also Pipewire under Wayland. Now, with the Wayland stuff, it's especially apparent with multi-GPU support. Now, I don't know how many people still run multi-GPU, and I don't know how many of those people also use Wayland. That seems like probably enough people to count on both my hands, but hey, if you're one of those people, you're going to get better support now. That's 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 great, I guess. 
And if you'd like to check out the full list of changes, I'll leave the GitHub announcement linked in the description down below. Sadly, probably the best and coolest feature from this version of OBS is only available on Windows because it relies on DirectX. The ability to hide the OBS window from your OBS capture. So I could have my OBS... So I could have OBS on the same screen that OBS is capturing and there'd be no problems whatsoever. It would look a little bit weird in a tiling window manager, but I certainly would like the ability to do that if it is ever one day possible on Linux. So overall, unless you have a burning hatred for flat packs, if you need to use OBS, I see basically no reason to not switch over. You get quicker updates, you get more consistent updates, and no more screwing around with random distros that don't want to package the application properly because they don't want to fix their repos. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you going to be swapping over? Do you even use OBS? Do you not even know why you're watching this video? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon. Subscribe to Only Barrow Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. So I'm out.